The what, why, and wow of the car world. A Moto Man Minute begins now. It's not every day that a car company launches an entirely new brand. So to get to know it, you really need to find just that right place. And while we're there, let's talk to the brains of the operation. So Ralph, you got a new job. Yes, I do. <laughs> What are you doing these days? Well, we're running the SRT brand. Uh, it's kind of been around for a little while, but we have decided to really make it official and, um, and start supporting it the way it needs to be supported. So what's the mission? Uh, mission is to spread the love. I mean, the owners have been keeping the SRT brand alive since 2003 when we introduced it on the, um, the Viper. Previously we known PVO was named like that. Um, now we've got a chance. We're launching this all new Charger, SRT8, which is a phenomenal piece, one of the best vehicles we've made, period, as a brand. Uh, and as we get new customers, I want them to fall in love, not just with the car, but with the community that is SRT. Yeah. Don't kill me here, man. Don't kill Don't me. Worry about it. <laughs> it's the first time I've been on a track with you. Oh, really? Yeah, we've driven in a lot of cars together, but this is the first <laughs> time we haven't done it on a public road. That's fun. So how did the whole idea of turning SRT8 into a separate brand come about? Well, it's my boss, um, Sergio, is, is quite a visionary. He realizes that, you know, coming from a world of, uh, he's familiar with supercars and passionate owners, uh, he understands that you've got to nurture this relationship between the owners and the cars and everything, and also the in-house, because these kind of vehicles don't happen on their own. It takes passionate people, uh, passionate engineers, passionate designers, uh, passionate leaders to kind of make sure they happen and survive, because uh, they take a little extra effort, and that's exactly what we've done over the years. There's been this, this kind of um, uh, group of bandits, so to speak, the SRT engineers that have stayed together. Uh, a lot of them have been in the group for almost a decade, decade and a half, uh, coming again from the Viper program, and that knowledge is kind of almost like tradition, it's handed down from engineer to engineer, and they get better and better with time. Uh, so that's the value of keeping the group together. So when you walked into a sea of K cars in 1992, did you ever think that you'd be a bandit? <laughs> no, we kind of find each other. I think, you know, enthusiasts, uh, uh, they get together and, and you kind of recognize that twinkle in a, a guy who's performance minded, because every time you have a car, you always look at it, at least I do, I look at it and go, hmm, what would that be if we put bigger tires on it, bigger brakes, would it be, that much faster would be that much more fun to drive. And it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize you take a powerful V8 rear drive car and you can, you can do something pretty amazing with it with a little attention. So what did you specifically do to the Charger? Well, Charger is, uh, first of all, the foundation product is awesome. Uh, we added a lot of negative camber, static negative camber, which helps in all cases. So you take the SRT and, and we've teamed up with Bilstein and put some awesome dampers. Uh, we've added uh, adaptive uh, suspension for the first time, so there's a switch uh, it's inside the instrument panel, you hit it and the car firms up dramatically. But it also changes the algorithm of the, the throttle calibration, the shift schedule, so the whole car kind of has a Jekyll and Hyde nature to it. So that's number one. Obviously the, the, the centerpiece of the vehicle is the new Hemi. At 470 horsepower, it's, it's quite a bit more powerful than the old one at 425 horse. But it's also a story about torque. The new 6.4, um, we, we've grown the engine dramatically and thickened the torque all the way down to 2,000 RPM. It has about 80 pounds more torque than the exit engine. So the car, you know, accelerates effortlessly. I noticed when I was driving on the street that the car just, for such a big car, it seems like you've hidden weight. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the weight is. What is the weight? Well, the weight's about 4,200 pounds, and uh, some of that is because we've added a lot of sound deadening to the base vehicle, which is kind of intrinsic. We can't uh, design it out of the vehicle, put a lot more laminated glass. So these cars are really sophisticated. But if you look at the E segment, the German E segment cars, it's kind of in the hunt. It's not terribly heavy compared to, it, to its uh, competition out there. Yeah, but what I noticed when I was driving, at least on the street, I haven't driven on the track yet, yeah. is you, you feel like you're driving a car in the low threes. Yeah, it's it's fun. It really is fun to drive. I mean, we, you know, what, what it is is the damping, the, the Bilstein dampeners and the way the tires work better with the negative camber takes a lot of the perceived mass away. The steering is also quicker. Uh, we've quickened the steering ratio. Again, lessons learned from the Challenger program. So when you turn in, the car responds very, almost immediately to all your inputs. And that what makes the car feel sprightly and fun to drive is that immediate response to inputs. So how much of the engineering do you as a designer now get involved into? Um, I think it just, I'm, I'm such a geek when it comes to that stuff. I just love to understand what's in a car so that I can speak intelligently to it someday as we are right now. So I ask a lot of questions and the SRT engineers love that we care. And if I'm going to be leading the brand, I better know uh, what's in the machinery. And sometimes you got to pay a little extra money to get Bilstein adaptive shocks. So when, when it fits the brand, it's easy to sell to management. So. I think, that especially at SRT, the engineers and the designers have a freakishly good relationship. If you look at the outside of the Charger specifically, everything is functional. As, as audacious as the styling is, it's all about negative lift at high speed. 
this vehicle at terminal velocity does 174 miles per hour and it's rock steady. So, you know, the wing is functional, the, the front spoiler negates lift, uh, the exhaust on the hood releases pressure from the hood and also cools off better. Uh, brake ducts are true brake ducts, you can stick your hand in them, you know. So, so it sounds like you had a bit of an open house. The engineers graciously let you into their room and you let them into yours. Yeah, and that's part of the culture at Chrysler in general. It's just amplified by, by the SRT team. So it's, I like the relationship and I think that's yeah. what makes cars special ultimately. So you got the Charger, you got the 300C, you got the Jeep. What else are you thinking in the future? Uh, we'll see. I want to obviously have something, an entry-level vehicle. I think uh, I do miss. I personally still have a four-cylinder uh, SRT4, which is an awesome vehicle still. Great uh, uh, network of people that still admire that vehicle. Uh, so I'd like to see something like that come back. And we have a lot of potential with our new Fiat platforms. They're, they're very lightweight, uh, great powertrains, uh, wonderful platforms. They're already good handling cars. So I uh, can't wait to see what we can so do with that. you're going to steal a car from Laura and put an SRT8 badge on it? <laughs> I can't really reveal that information, <laughs> but uh, let's just say we're getting a lot of pressure to do something just like that. And uh, any chance we can get a manual transmission here? You know, it's, a lot of people have been asking that question, and we, in the past we've developed manuals only to have them sit around as people, you know, the modern day automatic transmissions are very, very good, so it's kind of not as pressing as it used to be, especially with the paddle shifts, making it that much easier to use engine braking and whatnot when you're driving. But we'll keep looking at it. It, it seems to come up over and over again. Um, obviously, we have the manual in the Challenger, so it's not uh, undoable. It's just a matter of, of gaining interest. I would love your your listeners to to kind of give us some feedback on Remember that. Remember what you did I last know, time. I know, and it worked. You right, so. said you wanted to hear from the listeners. I still get thousands of emails about <laughs> convertibles. Can I just say that you're going to have a very angry group if oh, you don't geez. answer them very soon? All right, so I'll let my engineers know and uh, please do because see what we can do. Everyone wants, for the avoidance of doubt, everyone wants me to tell you, <laughs> tell Ralph. We want a Challenger convertible. Oh, and some market intelligence I'm gonna give you as well. There's no one out there really doing manual transmissions in a sedan like this. I mean, yeah. basically, you can buy a BMW. And the other thing I'd like to say about the Charger, there's no natural competition. I'm scratching my head with, you know, with the Pontiac uh, G8 gone. There really isn't anything quite like it. So I think there's something pretty unique there. And people will figure that out eventually. It's, it's something special. Yeah, I totally agree with you. There's no one out there short of $80,000 yeah. doing what you're doing. You that could be good or bad. <laughs> we'll find out, right? <laughs> Ralph, the thing, the thing everyone loves about you, and I, what I love about you is you're the contrarian investor. <laughs> you're the guy that comes to the table with a brand of performance cars when everyone else is doing electric, everyone yeah. else is doing uh, when green, eco, you're doing red. I think there's, you know, I think it's possible to find a balance, you know, because people are going to find a way to do it on their own either way. I mean, there's, I think they can coexist. And a lot of these cars, um, we sell very low volume. So the overall impact to the world is, is quite minor, but the people that drive these cars really appreciate it. It's our job to use technology to enable this and find a way to have it coexist gracefully with our objectives. Now, keep in mind, you know, as a company, we're investing broadly in, in, in everything we need to do, but I think performance needs to be protected and we got to use technology to do it.